Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be chatting about new beauty launches. I am excited to just kind of see what's out. If you saw my last like what I spent video, I definitely have been buying a little bit more makeup, but I've been keeping it kind of indie. And I also feel like I haven't really been on Instagram to like see a ton of the new stuff. So it'll be fun to go through with you, let you guys know my thoughts. I want to say a couple of things really fast. I did film this eye look. If you're interested, it's very, very simple, but it's going to be a part of like that huge conglomerate of like 10 looks, 10 palettes, 10 reviews ish that's coming. So I'm working on that video. I also want to mention if you like these types of videos, I get comments all the time that these are some of your favorite videos of mine to watch. You just love like kind of chatting and shooting the shit on the new launches. I highly suggest you guys checking out Tina or the fancy face here on YouTube. She does a series called the shopping block and it's a similar thing where she goes through new releases, gives her unfiltered opinions. She's hilarious. She's an amazing creator. I love Tina so much. I've been watching Tina for forever for forever. I think before I even had a channel myself. Like if you just enjoy someone who's very real and honest about what she wants or doesn't want and just has like unfiltered opinions, she's not here to like apologize to brands. I think you would really enjoy her channel, her, and especially that series. So I will leave her latest video down below as well as her channel. Definitely go check her out. That being said, let's get into some of these new launches. Let's just dive in. All right, we're going to start it off with color. Pop because this collection is something that I feel like is very intriguing to me. It definitely plays on this like fantasy idea of the makeup I like and want and you know would love to have in my collection. This is the tie dye pastel collection. I don't know. Oh yeah, the tie dye collection. I'm right. It is the tie dye collection. Okay, there are three main palettes, which is my big focus. There are also some pastel liners. There are two different highlighters. Overall, the aesthetic of these I love, and I think a lot of people love. This is ColourPop at its best in terms of really capitalizing on trends, coming out with makeup that is timely and of the now, that feels like so now, but also slightly ahead. They're really good at that. They're very fast in turnover because of how their business is set up where they also like have the factory they are able to really put things into production very quickly and you can see that as very successful I think in like a collection like this tie-dye is a huge trend in the last like month or two and they can already have something out right now whereas other brands I think that's just the red tape, all of it, you know, it just takes a long time. Maybelline's gonna have like a tie-dye collection probably, I don't know, in a year, right? You know what I mean? So anyway, I really like these in terms of color and aesthetic and how they look and it's so tempting. I will say there are pressed glitters in every freaking one of these palettes, so they are off the table for me personally. And I will say as much as I like the look of these, I know that I have probably similar things in my collection. I also know that like I'm kind of holding out for my menagerie pastel pup moment and maybe getting some of those singles and trying that formula since I haven't. So I think this is an example of really knowing myself and like what I really want and like holding fast to that. So that way I don't get tempted by something this cute, right? And very accessible. It'll get here probably really fast. It'll be really affordable, but I have a few things in place that are stopping me, which is great. I also feel like I'm at an advantage because I haven't bought into buying from all of these collections from ColourPop. I honestly haven't bought from ColourPop in probably over a year. I know that sounds pretty crazy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been that long. I think my last purchase in terms of like shadows or like a palette is the brown sugar palette which is now discontinued. So <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. And I think that although sometimes it hurts and it's hard, I am kind of happy that I haven't normalized buying all the collections from them because I think it just makes it so much easier to just add things to your cart and just keep you know, keep buying all the new collections. So I think it's cute. I totally get why people would love it. I really, really wish that they would stop putting the pressed glitters in their palettes, but I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon because it really hasn't gone away. So I like the look of that one though. I cannot lie to you. Next, let's talk about the Urban Decay Naked palette. They're coming out with Naked Ultraviolet, which is like a purple version of the Naked palettes. And I'm not surprised by this because because Urban Decay has continued their Naked line. Although I did think they were gonna maybe transition to something new. I'm actually getting this palette, I'm pretty sure, like 
that's exciting. So I will have a video trying this out since I'm fortunate enough to be able to try it in PR. I don't have it yet, so I can't let you know like anything about it besides what I'm seeing in pictures. But I thought that it was interesting. This is coming from Tina. When I was watching her video, she was talking about how, you know, the naked line, even in these colorful ones, is still supposed to be purple, but like more a naked version or something that is a little bit more user-friendly for people who might not love the most colorful things. And that just like, I don't know, just the way she said that changed my opinion in a lot of ways. I feel like sometimes I rag on these naked palettes that are supposed to be a little bit more Mm, spicy, like specifically the Heat palette, Naked Cherry. I think those might be the two. <laughs> this is like the purple version. I think that I look at them and like, oh, they're not that colorful. But when Tina framed it that way, I was like, oh, maybe they aren't supposed to. So when you look at this palette, it's purple, but really it's like half purple and then kind of half neutrals that would complement purples well. And so when I look at it with that lens, I'm like, oh, okay, I could see how if you don't want a full on purple palette, this might be just enough purples for you to be excited about. We'll see how the formula is. I don't know. That take, honestly, made me a little bit more excited to try this than I was expecting. So I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this one. I don't think it's like crazy revolutionary and I'd love to see Urban Decay really, I don't know, knock something out of the park, you know, like go there. But overall, I think it's a solid release. We'll see how the actual product performs. I don't think that I've talked about the new Kaleidos collection in one of these videos. It's been talked about a couple times on my channel because I did receive that in PR and I have a whole video kind of like first impression, doing a demo, lots of swatches. So I'll leave that link down below if you haven't seen it. But the new Make Your Escape collection and specifically I want to talk about the Escape Pod palette I think is beautiful. I think it is a really beautiful palette. I really have been enjoying using it and that will be a palette that I'm including in this kind of like 10 looks you know that I'm doing so again stay tuned for that I love the incorporation of the really colorful mattes with these beautiful shimmery toppers these shimmers I can see becoming more popular and uh, I'm so excited for that because they have been something that has got me so excited about makeup it's like the most exciting thing about makeup to me in the past probably year those types of shadows and those types of sparkles that add so much texture and dimension to a look are what I'm after. And I have a ton at this point, but it's still the thing that like makes me salivate. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's what's gonna hook me in, honestly, to any type of palette, any type of eyeshadow release. So this I thought was done really well. I've really been enjoying the quality of it. It's $42, which is a little bit more expensive, but you are getting a bigger palette. It is quite sturdy. It's a little bit bulky. So that's something to consider, but I. I do like it and I think it's such a fun palette. I really enjoyed the look I did with it the first time, but I really think having those colorful mattes where you can just like put a colorful matte in the outer corner, blend it out, you know, maybe just use that one shade and just be very mindful of like the brushes you're using and the amount of pigmentation and density and all that so you can get a nice blend. And then putting one of those shimmers on the lid, I think that's just such a fun look and it's pretty easy, but you can get something that's quite um, show stopping and kind of unique. So I'm into it. I'm really into it. Okay, let's talk about the Boom Boom Body Scrub from Sol de Janeiro. You guys know I really love Sol de Janeiro products in terms of the scent. I like the cream. I think it's really great. And for someone who doesn't love body cream and body lotions, like I don't like that greasy feeling. That cream is really well done and it sinks in. It feels hydrating without feeling greasy and gross and like you've just you need to take another shower you know so they have a new scrub this is like a sugar scrub but it's in the boom boom container and there's a part of me that's like tempted by this but I also feel like my thoughts about this have kind of shown a little bit of growth in me <laughs> in the sense that I don't think I need to buy this to try it like I have a feeling I would enjoy this product if I had it right but I know it's expensive let's see it's $42 for a scrub and it's like that's so much money that's just a lot of money and I know myself and I would think like oh it's so nice and I love it and it's so luxurious and I would enjoy using it but that's just too much right now right like like once you get through taxes, maybe shipping, like you're definitely spending 50 bucks. <laughs> and that's like a lot of fucking money. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if I can do it. I really love the Lalicious scrubs. I don't know if you've ever tried those. And I think of those as super bougie and like so expensive. They have like this whipped sugar texture. Let me look up how much those are. Those are $36. So I, in my head, I think of the Lalicious ones as beyond expensive, like in my dreams, birthday gift, Christmas gift, something that's a really like treat yourself moment. And they're $36 and the Boom Boom one is 42. So that like is some perspective there for me too. So um, yeah, as much as like I get excited when Sol de Janeiro re releases products, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. And I think the candle also taught me some lessons. So yeah, not going on my list. I think a lot of stuff isn't really going on my list. Again, I'm like trying to keep it a little bit more indie. I got tagged in this palette. <laughs> this is from... I don't know what brand, let's see. It's like King Beauty Official. Uh, King Beauty, I think, is maybe the brand or where you can buy it. It's a massive palette, okay? This is a 99 shade palette. It's like color extravaganza. It's throwing up on your eyes, rainbows and unicorns and sparkles. And there's a part of me that like is like, hell yeah, like a party, but also like not for actual makeup. It's just like to look at for three seconds and then move on. I cannot imagine having this palette in my collection. I cannot. I think that people were tagging me to like rearrange this and maybe I'll take some time to do that in a separate video or something. The swatches look pretty. It has nothing to do with the quality. It's just for my taste and what I am gravitating to. This is literally the exact opposite. Like a million shades, absolutely no curation. It's just everything all in one. No, I can't. It's not happening for me. I also think the background being that holographic like rainbow doesn't help you have like any rest for your eyes. It's like, it's still dancing and it might not even be dancing because of the actual colors of the pans. It's like the in-between is also colorful and rainbow. So it's just a lot to take in. And it's also 50 bucks, which is kind of a lot of money. And it must be massive. I mean, it has to be massive, even if they were quite tiny the pans, it must be huge. It's just a lot to work with. It's a lot to store. It's a lot all at once. I'd way rather them come out with little six pans that are fun color stories that are inspired by Carnival. Like that would be so cool. I'm not gonna buy it, but like if for some reason you decided this was for you, let us know what you think about it. What's the quality like? I would love to know that. I also don't think I've talked about this palette. It's been like three or so weeks since I've done one of these. Uh, video. So I don't think I talked about the J Kissa and Elf round two collaboration. This is a rainbow palette and I did think that this was really beautiful. I was definitely tempted, but it sold out really, really fast. I also need to check ingredients, honestly. So keep that in mind. I haven't done that yet. I really liked this actually um, with like the first row of mattes and then the second row of kind of a deeper ish shade or like a variation of that same color. And then the third row being a Again, the same color in the rose down. This sounds so confusing to me, so I hope you understand what I'm saying. But those being like the shimmer shades, I love that. And those shimmer shades look very beautiful in texture. I've seen some really pretty looks. I think uh, Makeup by Shayla did a really beautiful look with them. It was like this really beautiful blue, smoky eye, if I can remember correctly. That made me like really like, mm. Mm, I kind of want that palette, but I know I don't need it. It would be more for like a review for the channel and something like that. And I try not to do too much of that. Like, I don't know, I'm going back and forth. Maybe I'll do a get ready with me kind of talking about that topic because although I don't ever want to do reviews just to do reviews, like buy things just to review that I'm not interested in, when there are things that I'm interested in and maybe had I not had a channel I wouldn't buy, there is this part that's like, well, you know, maybe if you guys were interested I can let you know my thoughts and help you make a decision and also, you know, kind of staying up to date on some of the new releases, actually testing, actually trying, uh, trying new formulas and all of that. I don't know. I'm kind of like grappling with that in my head about how that works into my channel and like what I want. So yeah, anyway, I think it was a pretty release though. Very J Kissa. It felt very genuine and very her. And I like, that's what I want from any type of collaboration is just like, it just makes sense, right? Like that is 
all I can ask for. And this lived up to that for sure. I'd love to know if you did pick this up, what you think the quality is like, and uh, if you think it's worth it for me to maybe see if it like restocks. All right, let's talk about a collection from BH Cosmetics. I think this is so freaking cute. This is the Weekend Vibes collection, and it's kind of all centered around brunch and stuff, which I haven't been to brunch in I don't know how long. <laughs> I wish I could go. The two palettes that are in here, there's Avocado Toast and there's Mimosa. And I think these are both really pretty. I don't know. I mean, are they that revolutionary? Not really sure. But I think that like packaging and marketing, color selection, all of that, I think they look really cohesive and they work really well, especially in terms of like separates. Like if you just pull the Avocado Toast palette, I think it's a good standalone palette and I think it's pretty. But then when you put everything together as a collection, so these two palettes, but there also are two face palettes, I also think that those are pretty. I don't know about how deep these shades are when it comes to, I think it's a highlighter palette. It's a bronzer and highlighter palette. So I definitely think that is really light and they could have had either a second palette for deeper skin tones or made one palette that kind of could work for everyone that has a bigger range. Uh, I wish they did that. Same with the blushes. I'm just not sure. Sometimes it's hard to tell without like actually swatching um, how blushes are going to look like you can make a kind of inference, but depending on how much like white base there is in a color is definitely going to be an indicator of how it's going to translate across skin tones. So like for a peach that maybe doesn't have a lot of base to it, like white, like white base, that might be able to work on more skin tones than you'd expect. So I definitely think there's some missed opportunities there. And I just definitely think there was room for the shade range, but I also think it would have been cool to maybe have these as singles so that way people could pick up what they wanted. I think eyeshadow palettes work really well, but it, it, it does get tricky when you get into blush palettes, even duo. I think would be better. You just have more control over really making sure products are going to work for the people that would buy them. Yeah, that's how I feel about that. But overall, I do like the aesthetic of it. Like, I think it's like a fun collection. The next release I want to talk about is a collaboration with Makeup Revolution and Tammy or Makeup by Tammy. I thought this was a really beautiful collection. Tammy is a black creator here on YouTube and she's like amazing makeup artistry. So she collaborated. I think this might be her set. Second collaboration, maybe? But there's an eyeshadow palette and then there are two face palettes. As opposed to the BH Cosmetics palettes that I just talked about, both of the face palettes in here definitely would work for deeper skin tones, which makes sense. And I think that this is just really well done. I, I think it's a great collaboration. And palette wise, I like all the colors. I think that they're nice and rich. I wish there weren't glitters, like again, glitters. Press, it's so funny because before the whole press glitter thing for me, I would have loved the press glitters being in the palettes. It would have been something I was so excited about. I feel like I did this to myself almost. Like I wanted everyone to have press glitters and now I'm over here like cursing myself for wishing that would happen. And again, I really love the price point. It's nice sometimes to have these more inexpensive collaborations, just depending on what you're comfortable spending on makeup and what you can actually afford as well. I didn't mention this, but the palette's called Tropical Twilight. And when you think of a Tropical Twilight, like a picture and the inspiration for that, the, the palette captures it, right? The palette captures that and I love seeing that. You guys know I'm a sucker for inspiration. I'm a sucker for cohesion and I think it's like beautiful. You can just see yourself on the beach at sunset, at twilight, but still like rocking something that's like beautiful and vibrant, but just slightly like a little bit deeper, a little bit sultry. I love it. I really, I love the vision. Next, I wanna talk about some new products from Danessa Myricks. And I haven't really talked much about her brand, but I have had her like, like pigments, like liquid cream pigments. I see a lot of the makeup artists specifically that I watch on um, Instagram use those as bases to create some beautiful, beautiful eye looks. Anywhere from something very natural and like editorial in that way to like editorial and bright and beautiful and, and vibrant the other way. So I've had those kind of on my radar for a while, but she's coming out with some highlighter palettes. I believe there are two different ones. One's for lighter skin, one's for deeper skin. Danessa Myricks is a black owned brand, which is awesome. If you go to her Instagram, it's really beautiful. Again, I really love this mix of 
beautiful like skin highlighted so fresh but then there's also a lot of mix ins with some pops of color I, I just really get on with the look of everything it feels like my style of like really blended um, or like really bold but maybe just one color and I love that I love 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 that something about it's still kind of simple and I love that so anyway, I think that those look really pretty. I honestly don't know if I need like a whole palette, but I would love to see these become singles and maybe pick one I think would be best for me that I think would be more my style. So I'd wait for that. But I love to see something new, right? From a brand where I don't know if like powder products were really a thing. It was a lot of, again, those creams are what I always saw. So it's exciting just to see potentially like a new product, more development, you know, it gives you hope for like what's coming down the line and it's exciting. Patrick Ta is coming out with some more stuff. There's some more lipsticks. There's some more lip liners. There's some more like blush and kind of like, yeah, it's like a bronzer, but kind of like a blush. It could be in between. I think these look beautiful. I think Patrick Ta, like it's such a fantasy of, of luxury and beauty to me. Sleek. Yeah, it's on my list, of course, but it's like, it's a far off list that I don't know when I'll get to buying. I'm not necessarily interested in like the lipsticks and the lip liners. I definitely definitely be more interested in maybe a gloss if I were to do a lip product in general but I do think that the blush duos are beautiful and I really feel like duos are where it's at maximum trios and instead of these larger face palettes if I'm being honest obviously for like pro lines and I feel like Danessa Myricks is more of like a pro line since we just talked about that I think that palettes make sense for that where it's like it's for pros and for consumers but when it comes to brands that are more just for consumers and and then also people can use them as like luxury makeup pieces in their kit. I do think like duos are really what I like. Like I feel like you get a little bit more value than just one blush and some variety and you can try a couple different colors, all that, but it's not so overwhelming and you're not buying necessarily a ton of shades that aren't gonna work for you. So um, I definitely really love the trend of like seeing more of these duos. Oh my gosh, can we talk about the Morphe and Coca-Cola collaboration? Okay, first off, I love Coca-Cola, okay? Like, I love the taste of Coke, like regular, not diet, come on. Mm. It's so good to me, okay? <laughs> it's one of those things like, get me some tacos, get me a Coca-Cola, you got me, right? Part of me is like weirdly interested in seeing what this would look like just because of my love for the drink itself. But when it's inside, I don't know, you guys. I think this is the most lackluster way you could do it. I don't know. I mean, I can't tell you I'd do better because, you know, what are you gonna do? There's like red, they did like some aluminum can vibes in the corner with some like grays, and then they put some browns to like work it in. I mean, it makes sense. I just think they could have cut this down. The top row just looks like the same shit over and over. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. We need more pictures, right? This is just like one promo pic. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is definitely something that people are gonna buy for the packaging. They're gonna buy for the branding. They're gonna buy for that whole already existing IP type stuff. When it comes to the actual colors of the palette, not really feeling it. And I think that, I think it just could have been more. It could have been pushed more, could have been condensed down. I think that there are better ways it could have been handled personally. Hmm. That's how I feel. I will say it's only $22, which is pretty inexpensive, but I would have liked that price point, even if the price point was exactly the same, $22, but it was a nine pan palette. Yes, value wise, it's more expensive or whatever, but I think it would have been a better palette for it, like a better collaboration for it. I saw some of these eyeshadow palettes from Dior. These are coming in July and August. And I, initially I looked at these and was like, who'd care? Who cares about these? And then I was like swiping through and I was like, well, maybe me, I kind of like them. I don't know what it is. There is something with like how my tastes have changed. Yes, I like that sparkle and that texture, but I also feel like I'm a bit of a sucker for a satin now. Before I used to be like, oh, there's no mattes. Like how can we do anything without mattes? And I'm not like that anymore. So that's not something kind of stopping me. And I, I find something very classic and and still beautiful about these palettes, something that's like simple and, and not overdone and not over fussed with, with 
a quad or these are quince there's five shades in there and I think all the colors are pretty like even the blue it's kind of a lot of blue but like this really beautiful caramely one has like caramel tones that are like golden bronze a little bit more of like a cool tone taupey bronze and then two different mattes like a deep brown and like a reddish brown that's really beautiful I also really do like the cool tone quad it's a little bit too grayscale for me um for what I want like I want a little bit more taupe than like aluminum but I still think overall it's pretty and I don't know I won't buy them but I will say like looking through them like I can appreciate them a little bit more than just like writing them off like I initially did I have some stuff from NYX that I wanted to talk about some palettes I think there are two new ones maybe let's see I don't know maybe it's just the Utopia one but this Utopia palette I think is pretty I just think it's too big right I get the vibes and it's kind of like earthy and I, there's something almost like jungly about it that I kind of like overall aesthetic wise when I think of these as like paint swatches all put together I think it's pretty but when I think of it as like practical makeup and like storing it all those things right it's too much and I wish it was a little bit smaller but it would take away from some of it though so maybe this is one I should like rearrange too in, in a video just like because there's 40 shades in there it's like holy crap that's a lot of shadow 40 shadows in one palette is a lot I'm not sure on the glitter status of this so keep that in mind but I think visually looking at it initially it is pretty it's just massive it's too massive let's see and it's $35 which I don't even know prices at this point I'm just I am confused. I am confusion as to what I think is worth it and what isn't. It's just hard to tell anymore. And I just try to like only buy things I'm like 100% interested in. And anyway, I don't even know if that makes sense. Let me know what you guys think. Like pricing to me is just like all over the board. <laughs> <laughs> all over the freaking board. I wanted to talk about these Kaja blushes. I think these are so pretty. They are the cheek creams. There's two different ones. One's more like berry mauve. One's more like peachy, but kind of fiery red. I like these a lot. I want both of them. I love the price point at $18 each. I'd love to try their cream formula. I love again that they're duos. And I also really appreciate the fact that there's like a really bright vibrant color and then something a little bit more docile and you can either use those and mix them together you can just use the like brighter one I could see beautiful blush draping happening with these I think the colors although there's only two sets you know there's a lot of range there's a lot of inspiration to me when I see them I'm, I'm into them I'm into it and I like it a lot I do I can't lie to you for the last couple of things that I want to talk about I'm gonna tell you about some things I've seen just on my feed literally right before I sat down to film this and that's makeup corner if you don't follow her on Instagram or YouTube I'll leave her down below you should she um, got some shadows from shine SD cosmetics I think that's how you say it these are really beautiful they're called it's the reverse collection and they're very beautiful like iridescent duochromes like shiny beautiful shadows they're single shadows it's an indie brand it's a black owned brand and I want to get them like I went straight to the website <laughs> And I'm like, I'm gonna buy these. <laughs> so um, maybe, I'm, I think I'm gonna try to buy my Sydney Grace ones first because they've been on my list for longer and let these kind of sit and just like build up in my heart because I know I'll buy these. Like they're so beautiful looking and I just can't not. I'm also gonna be looking out for like more thoughts from Annette as things go forward. But ooh, I really liked the swatches. They looked kind of sheer, but still so textural and like beautiful toppers and mm, I want them. I don't know when those like launched, but I want them. Some more eyeshadow that I saw. This is from Karen Harris. Again, if you don't follow her on Instagram or YouTube, you should, hello. I'm gonna leave her link down below. But she got the, uh, what is this? The Impressionism palette from Muse Beauty. Oh my gosh, I really want, <laughs> I really kind of want this one too. I don't need this. I do not need this one, okay? I know that I could make this, but there's something about it that I really like. And again, inspiration wise, I get it. I feel it. It looks so pretty. I like the swatches. I'm just like kind of into it. It's just selling it for me, right? And it's a new brand, like something I haven't heard of before. And that's really enticing to me. Like Water Lily Sunrise, Coast and Almond. There's this picture on their Instagram that to me all together, I'm like, Hi, I want that. I like those colors. <laughs> so those are just some things like as I've been scrolling have like stopped me 
you know, in my tracks. And trust me, my Instagram is like full up of makeup. Sam's always just shocked. That's like, yeah, hi, that's what I like, hello. I think I'm gonna end the video here today. I'm sure I've missed something. I'm sure something will come out right as I post this or something. <laughs> and I'll be behind once again. But those are some of the things that have caught my eye in my feed, some of the newer things, some of my thoughts. I'd love to know any of your thoughts. And if you have any beautiful like indie brands, sparkly shadows, leave them down below because I'm like, I'm into it right now, okay? I'm into it. I'd love to know any of your thoughts on any brands mentioned, any new brands that I should check out, please and thank you. Don't forget to check out the creators that I mentioned. It'd be amazing if you could show them some love. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.